WeGo has, in association with the Self-Employed Women's Association in India, um, and with other interest groups, such as the group of, of economists from Cornell University, um, run a series of EDPs, Exposure Dialogue Program. And the idea is that um, people go out and spend two or three days and nights working alongside informal workers, poorer informal workers, such as street vendors, home-based workers, construction workers, for example, and work alongside from 4.30 in the morning when the workers get up to 9.30 at night, typically when people go to bed, um, trying to understand the microeconomics of what that household is doing to try and accumulate assets, to try and, in the worst cases, simply survive, um, and then use that information in a consequent one or two days of a structured discussion about such things as what would minimum wages do here? What are the, what are the constraints on trade around here? Uh, what information asymmetries did we find and are there ways in which the, that, um, the asymmetries could be lowered for informal workers who are really marginal? Many are very excluded um, from the way the, the, the larger society operates. Um, and the key goal is to shift mindsets, and it's not just for the economists, obviously, it's been for human rights lawyers, to help them identify um, informal work as real work. With the economists, I think it's mostly to try and shift the idea that informal work is residual, whereas informal work has become part of the continuum of all work in the world. A problem with the conceptualization of development is that people automatically think of the sovereign nation state as the unit of analysis, whether it's economists, sociologists, um, international agencies, or, or whoever. I think it's increasingly being recognized that with the growth of big cities, the growth in the numbers of people living in big cities, actually the level of government that impacts immediately on informal workers and others is local government. And the position that local governments take towards the provision of infrastructure to different kinds of so-called non-standard workplaces. And I think that you, it's, it's easy to see it once you do one of these exposure programs where you see it in front of you all of the time. And I think that's what we mean by shift in mindset. It's not just a, a, a quick little insight about, oh, I've never seen that before, that's interesting. But some attempt to actually get more inclusive concepts of, the, of, of how economically, how people are able to start accumulating assets, which are then not removed from them through harassment, through confiscation, um, or through the, um, uh, the impact of macroeconomic policy. But so to, to add to, to all of that, the impacts of, lo of local government interventions. The importance is the bridging role that they can play between disciplines at the one level and between those who theorize development on the one hand and those who are trying to make a living on the other. Those who are on the receiving end of, for instance, poverty intervention programs to enable them to express their own well thought through concerns about programs with those who are implementing programs. And then the step up from that is from those who are implementing programs to those who are providing the intellectual framework, if you like, for the devising of social policy. So I don't think it's just, it's just about the top and the bottom. I think the networks can, at their best, create a, steer, a series of steps along a ladder 
um, between um, poorer people and those who are responsible for the thinking behind what sometimes come out as practical policy interventions.